He ate some berries right there. <laughs> <laughs> and dripped on the leaves. Yeah. And you see our so, little can piece. hickle beds be put on top of landscape rock? Or would the rock be best removed? Well, I have never had somebody put hugel beds because you have to dig down with machinery three feet down. So you'll ah. probably be removing those rocks with the machinery when you're okay. excavating. So they're they're not they're not a on top of existing ground. You dig a pit. We dig down. Okay. Hugel beds are dug down three feet down. Interesting. Yep. You can see all those beautiful grates behind the pear tree right there. Mm -hmm. And a little oh, here. what happened here? Oh, we had to cut that out because it was straight up in the middle. Okay. But because the Christmas lights didn't get taken out that year, the person who cut it back didn't take the branch out. But it will be taken out okay. this next next winter. Here we have another kind of plum tree right here. Mm -hmm. But because of the hard freeze that we had, he has just a few little plums on him this year. And this is my... 15-year-old now this year. I keep looking at the videos to remember how old it is. Planted from a pit. Best apricot. Big apricots like this every year. Last year, in five years of blooming too early and freezing, because we get these early, you know, late frosts mm -hmm. and early blooming here in Utah, and it's always the apricots that bloom first. But last year was the first year he had thousands of apricots on here. Wonderful. Oh, it was really wonderful to do all the 24 quarts of apricot jam. It really was wonderful. The birds love all the lilac trees. Mm -hmm. And so we have a bird feeding station that they come and eat here. And the doves, I give wheat in there. And you can see this beautiful big grapevine mm -hmm. that we cut back every year is growing through the tree. So it'll hang these beautiful little grapes as well. And here's more cover crop on this hugel bed along. And they're beautiful little flowers. Because it's more part shade here, mm -hmm. he's blooming and producing a little bit later. And that's good, because I like to have peas a little bit later. But into it, we plant our summer vegetables. So we've got some tomatoes planted in there. There's another kind of cherry here called a neronia cherry under the staghorn sumac. You've got mineral accumulating comfries in here. Another sand cherry right there. There's a few berries on this young one mm -hmm. behind a peach tree right there. And there's little birds flying around. <laughs> it's just really fun to see what you can create this effect under here is so wonderful and you've got your beans are starting to come up along with your peppers that we just planted in here and some beets along with tomatoes and this effect of the filtered light coming through mm -hmm. of this canopy tree right now he's playing canopy tree because he's the oldest tree but eventually there'll be an ash tree growing up right there he'll be the canopy tree to shade this part of the garden from the south sun and we've got our beautiful, see these used as trellises. The peas can grow up. The tomatoes can grow up. All these sunchokes. They make great trellises. They make great quick shade. Down here we start our gooseberry row of all gooseberries down here with the honey crisp apple right here. Mm -hmm. And you can see we just chopped and dropped some of the comfrey once the flowers are all done. And then we give the minerals to the tree. Very neat. <laughs> And we're behind the row of beautiful, come here pretty, what a good girl, golden raspberries here. They're just starting to ripen, so this will be the very first one you get to taste. Huh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot to get the, hold on just a sec.